Hey you folks, Quilly Team here, and welcome to another episode of our guide to surviving Mars for complete beginners. In this episode, we are going to build. And well, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to start collecting concrete. Concrete's going to be the base for a lot of our buildings here on Mars. It's easy to make, basically just from the right kind of dirt and rock, and we can make some pretty good structures with that. So, we've got a variety of concrete deposits here near our landing spot. We've got three patches, actually, which is pretty uncommon. Now, each one of these patches have, you know, different sizes. This one's the biggest size, but its grade is a little bit lower, which I think means it'll be a little bit more... Um, a little slower and less efficient to extract. This one over here is a high grade of concrete. It's less of a big patch, but it still has tons and tons of it. So we're going to go ahead and start mining out over here. So to build buildings, how do we do that? Well, down here at the bottom left corner, you do have a build menu. You can click on it to open that up. You can also hit the B key by default to open the build menu. I'm a big fan, though, of hitting the right mouse button. The right mouse button can open and close the build menu for you here. Now, there are multiple categories of buildings. There's infrastructure, power, production, life support, storages, domes. And by the way, you will get a lot more of these things as you unlock new technologies. And then there's a variety of buildings that will go inside domes. Domes are where your people live. But we don't have any people yet. And what we want to do is we want to start way over here at production. So here we have a concrete extractor. And that's what we're going to use to grab the concrete here. Uh, extracts sulfurous rich regolith from the concrete deposits and produces concrete. All extractors contaminate nearby buildings with dust. Dust means they're going to have to be maintained more frequently. You can see that to build this, it's going to require six metal and two um, machine parts. Now, while you're in the build screen, your resource overview opens up. If you're not in the build screen, by default, you don't see it, but you can always keep it open by clicking the colony overview button down here. Uh, it's hotkey to O. I like to leave this open all the time so I can keep track of the state of my base, how much power, how much oxygen, how much water I've got, and all my materials. Later on, when we get people, we can also go and click on this colonist view over here to get a list of our colonists and get a general idea of how they're doing. And there's a bunch of other buttons we'll look at later on here. But I like to keep this resource tab open a lot. I find it just so very handy. So we're going to go ahead. I'm going to right click again, go to the concrete extractor. So again, we need metal and we need machine parts. Now, machine parts we have because we brought them with us from Earth, but we don't have any metal. By the way, these parts over here are in our shuttle. If I click on the shuttle, this is the quill rocket over here, and I can see what's inside the quill rocket. It's got a bunch of these resources in here. So we've got those goods at this time. But we don't have any metal. So how are we going to be how are we going to build the concrete extractor? Well, these rocks over here on the surface, these are surface metal deposits. They're just scattered on the surface and we can collect them but with drones or RC transports. The drones will automatically grab metal from here as we need it. So this is a great spot for us to land because there's quite a few chunks of the metal around for us to take advantage of. So let's see what happens when we go. I'm going to right click, get a concrete extractor over here. You can rotate it to choose where to put it. And the sort of like brighter whitish hexes over here, that is the area it's going to mine from. So you can see if I'm over here, it's complaining that it's not on a deposit. But as soon as I go over the yellow area, it's OK. It is complaining that it doesn't have a cable connection. But that's all right. We're going to set up the cable soon. So I'm going to get this um, this lit area to be on top of as much of the regolith as possible. You can see on the right how many resources will be underneath this area. So one of these won't actually mine out the whole area. We'll have to maybe build another one later on, but that's going to be OK. I'm going to go ahead and put it here. It's going to have 360 concrete here, high grade, so it should mine fairly fast. I like it. So I'm just going to go ahead and click. So now I have placed this building. Well, I've placed the blueprint for the building. Got this like blue outline here and it's got a little pallet in here where our drones will deliver the goods. So if I go and unpause the game at this point, my drones will come to life because they have work to do. So I'm just running a normal speed here. Now, I have to say, normal speed is I mean, lovely to look at. I tend to run at a faster speed because it does take a little while for everything to get done. In fact, I often spend most of the game on fast tis. Remember, you can always hit the space bar to pause the game. So that's what I tend to do. I run on fastest and then I, I pause whenever I have to deal with something. And that's probably what we'll do. But before we get there, let's enjoy the beauty and wonder 
of our drones going here and collecting metal from these metal deposits. I think they're just adorable the way they open up their little containment pack. They fill it up and then they go around. You can see what goods they're carrying with the little icon above here. And they're going to go and deliver the goods to the building site. And you can see them start to accrue on the middle bit here. Once we've got all the resources that we need, the building will get built. You can see this drone here is bringing metal parts from the shuttle. They'll go up the ramp, go inside, grab the metal or the machine parts and drop them off over here. So I'm going to go ahead now and I will run it to the fastest speed just to get this done a little faster because we've got to do a fair amount of building this episode. And there we go. Bam. Awesome. Now we get a warning right away in the top left corner. We have a building. I'm going to pause. We have a building that's not working and we get this icon here that says, hey, this building is unplugged. It's not connected to any kind of power. Right. Buildings need power. If we click on the building, we can actually see how much power it needs. It needs five energy in our in our electrical grid for this building to work. You can also see this on the build screen. If I mouse over, say the concrete extractor, you can see again, it's got that cost of six metal and two machine parts, and it consumes five electricity. It also needs to be maintained with machine parts. Every building needs to be maintained from time to time. If I click on the concrete extractor here, you can see the maintenance bar. This will slowly fill up, and when it reaches the end, it will no longer work. The building will shut down until it gets maintained, and it'll take one machine part for this building to get fixed up, restored back to fresh and new. Okay, power. So what do we do about that? Well, again, we're going to build. So I'm going to right click and I'm going to go into the power menu over here, the lightning bolt. And we've got a variety of options over here. We've got tiny solar panels and large solar panels, although the large ones are not that large. I tend to just use these, but you can sometimes squeeze in a teeny tiny little solar panel somewhere else. We've got wind turbines as well. We've got these Sterling generators. These Sterling generators, we actually don't start with the ability to build them on Mars, but our initial setup gave us two prefabs of these. We've got power accumulators. These are basically just giant batteries, power cables, and a power switch. Well, looking through this, the large solar panel makes five power and hey that's exactly how much we need now i mean there's different things you can check for like min maxing of different things technically this the normal solar panels give you two power for one metal of construction whereas this is barely more than one power per metal of construction so there's like a worse ratio but the maintenance on the large solar panels in a large long run will be a lot less the wind turbines work all the time not just at during the day but they require both concrete and metal parts or machine parts to make work. We don't have our concrete yet, so we're going to have to start with the solar panel. Fair enough. Okay, we'll do that. Um, so we can put it anywhere. I'm going to put it, you know what? I'll put it relatively close to our site. Let's put it uh, right over here. Again, you can rotate these buildings if you would like. So I'm just going to click here. We've got that. I will unpause. So it just needs metal. So again, our drones will go and collect some metal from over here. Do, 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 do. And then as they get it, they will drop it up over by the solar panel. Bam, 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 bam. That gets built. Excellent. Now the solar panel is on, but it's complaining, hey, I'm not actually plugged into anything. You might want to do something about that. So we're going to go back into the build menu and grab the power cables. Power cables, it takes one metal for each five hexes long section. I believe if you just built a small power cable, I think it would just use a fraction of the metal. So you don't have to worry about doing it exactly. But this is how we connect power producers and consumers by establishing a power grid. Okay, so I will click on that. Now, the, the cables, you will click on one tile. So let's say I click here, and then I just can stretch it out any way I want, and I can click again to put it down. If I change my mind, I can right-click. Right-click will cancel the current construction. If I right-click again, it'll actually cancel out of build mode completely. So I will click on power cables. Now, the power cables to work, they just have to be next to a building. So if I built a power cable from here to here, that would work perfectly. Now, sometimes it's a little hard to tell if you're actually right next to a building or not. So a, maybe a slightly easier way to build these just to make sure that you've connected everything right is you can actually click inside the building. Now, that won't actually build the cable there, but it will start stretching appropriately from out of that building. And the same thing, I can click inside the building. I can't actually get a cable inside that, but if I click here inside the building, it will build a power connection that will properly connect both. And again, I'm still sort of in build mode because you can keep going. I'm going to right click to cancel out of that and right click again to cancel. And my bots, I'm paused. So if I unpause here, my bots will go and collect some more metal and do that. Great stuff. Now, let's talk about storage of goods because we're going to need that. The concrete extractor here, now that it's working, is going to produce concrete. 
It's also going to produce waste rock over here. We'll talk about that in a second, but it's going to produce concrete, and actually, as it produces the first unit of it, it will show up in the back here. Now it can store a certain amount of concrete. It'll store up to 20 here, but then after that, the machine will simply stop working. So, well, it, this is fine if we're using the concrete, but if we are not using it fast enough and the concrete uh, extractor stops working all the time, that might be a little bit annoying. So could we go and move it somewhere? Actually, we're going to pause again because we got a note. A building's not working. Why is it not working? Because we don't have power. Now we get a lightning bolt icon. Lightning bolt means, yes, we're plugged into the grid, but the grid doesn't have enough power. Why not? And you can see insufficient power over here. Well, it's nighttime. And our solar panels don't work at night. In fact, they even go and fold themselves up so that they're protected from dust. We have no power at night over here. Oh no, what are we going to do? It's okay, we'll deal with that in a moment. Let's talk about the storage a little bit more. So we would like to have this concrete moved out of here into maybe a larger storage. So if I right click to build mode and we go down to storages over here, you can see there's storage for every type of resource that can actually be you know, carried around in the game we can build a storage for. Each one of these storages can hold 180 of the thing. In addition to that, there's a universal depot over here, which st stores 30 of each thing. There's also this thing called dumping site for waste rock, and we'll just hold that thought for just a moment. So if I go and build a concrete depot over here, so I'm gonna click on that, and this is just, it doesn't even take material to build a storage depot. It's just like, we're just defining a place on the ground of, hey, put some stuff here. Put down a couple of like pieces of cardboard on the ground so it doesn't get dirty, and that's fine. So let's say I go over here and put a concrete depot right there. Okay, and I'm gonna unpause. We'll see the drones go to work. They're gonna go over here, they're gonna keep grabbing the concrete that's produced there, and they'll drop it off in the depot. Keeps your base nice and organized, gives you a way to move goods around, and make sure this thing doesn't get too filled up. Okay, that's very cool. Now, we still have to deal with the fact that this thing won't run at night. Now, honestly, that might be fine. We might be totally okay with the fact that this thing um, doesn't run at night by default. Um, because we only want to use power. In fact, we could make it explicit. We can these buildings have up to three shifts, and this they run at different times. This is from six in the morning to two in the afternoon. This is two in the afternoon till um, ten p.m. And this is the overnight shift from twenty two to six. If I just go and turn that off, we're telling this building, hey, never run at night. And it doesn't even complain about the lack of power. And then suddenly it's daytime at six a.m. here. The solar panel comes on and that's time for our morning shift and that works, no longer complains. That's cool, but maybe we do want it to run at night. So I'm gonna turn this back on. So we're gonna run at night now. So how do we get it to run at night? Well, there's two possibilities. One, we can generate power at night. Now that we have access to concrete, we could build a wind turbine over here. So a wind turbine runs night and day. So I'm gonna go and drop it say over there and I'm gonna go and build a power cable connection. I'm just gonna extend the power cable to here so that it's going to be connected to the wind turbine. So now it runs night and day, which is great. But solar panels are still really efficient. They don't take a lot of material to build. They're great. Um, so maybe we still want to use a lot of uh, um, solar panels to get our base going on here. And at this point, the windmill is producing all the power that the, um, the concrete extractor needs. In fact, it's getting a slight boost to its power production. The higher up a windmill is, the better it is at producing power. So it's actually producing 5.9. So we're currently... If I just look at my resource overview over here, right? If I don't have any building selected, resource overview, you can see the power surplus is 5.9. If we mouse over it, you can see we're producing 10.9 power and we're only using five of it right now. All that extra power is going to waste. Wouldn't it be a good idea if we could store that? So let's go ahead and build a power accumulator. So power accumulator is just a battery. I'm gonna put it here. It's gotta be next to a power cable. When it gets built up, this will store excess power um, and it will it will provide power to the grid if we have a shortage. And if you've got a bunch of solar panels, then during the night, you're not gonna have any power, then you'll drain your batteries. So there you go. So the battery's gonna start off flat, <laughs> and then it's going to actually inflate as it charges more power. So it's gonna charge quicker during the day when the solar panel is working. Good stuff. Okay, so we've got concrete, we've got this. Uh, what do we need next? Well, if we wanna have a base with people, we're gonna need oxygen and we're gonna need water. So let's work on that. First, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna extend this power cable so we have more room to work with. So I'm gonna right click, I'm gonna grab my power cables and I'm just gonna, I don't know, do something like, oh, I can't run through there because there's rocks. You know what? I don't wanna have a crooked cable. I wanna go through this area. What can I do about these rocks? Well, these rocks are metal. Can I go and, you know, right now we've been building. Every time we build, our, our little drones go and mine out the metal and then do the building. 
could we get the things to be mined out ahead of time? Well, let's go, we're gonna right click, we're gonna go to storages. I'm gonna make a metals depot over here and I'm gonna put it right there. And if I unpause, you can see all my drones are like, oh, oh, we've got somewhere to put metal. Let's go ahead and mine out this metal and go and place it here. That way, when we need to build a building, we've got all our metal chunks all ready to go. That's wonderful. You can also improve this by making use of your RC transport. So we've got three different remote control vehicles over here, and we haven't used them yet. Uh, ideally, we'd actually use the Explorer for, you know what? Let's use the Explorer first. Let's talk about this. So you can select a vehicle by clicking on it. And then you can give, let me go to normal speed here. Then you can give the vehicle commands. If you, if you have the vehicle selected and you don't want it to be selected, just click on the ground. Click on a vehicle, click on the ground. Vehicle, ground. If you click on the vehicle and right click, the vehicle moves to where you right click. Look at it go! Got those big fluffy tires here. Oh, how excellent. So we can run the vehicle around I like that. As it moves around, it will slowly lose power. We'll talk about that in a moment. This is an explorer. Its job is to explore anomalies, these little yellow blips on the map. And if I go ahead and go to the map, you can see there's a slew of them. Some look like these flasks, some look like keys, some are an eyeball, whatever that means. So what can we do with that? Well, we can zoom back in. By the way, if you don't know where your vehicle is, let's say you're off screen here, you can go ahead and double click on your vehicle. So down here, all your vehicles by default got added to your toolbar. If I find my, uh, my explore here and I can click it, select it, if I double click, it'll zoom the camera over there, very handy. So I'm gonna take my RC Explorer and I'm gonna right click on this anomaly. And you'll see its status is analyzing an anomaly. It's gonna go over here and start scanning this and we'll get something out of it. Now this anomaly with a flask is likely to gonna give us a bunch of free research points, speeding up our research. That's great, let's let it do that. Meanwhile, let's take a look at the RC transport. This is meant to grab, it can pick up goods from somewhere and deliver them somewhere else. Load resources, unload resources. Now you can do that with anything. So for example, we've got some resources here sitting on a platter. I can go and say load resources from here and it'll bring up a pop-up menu listing all the things that um, you can load. Now this storage only has metal, so that's the only option. If I click, you'll see it's gonna load as much as it possibly can. If you control click, you can tell it to just load five at a time. Let's go ahead, I'm gonna control click metals and I'm gonna tell, did I not do it? Oh, there we go. Current load out. I'm telling, sorry. I'm telling it with every control click, I'm telling it how much to load. So I've loaded up 10. I'm telling it to load up 10 and I can right click to confirm an exit. So I'm going to do that. Normally, if you just click on the thing, you just tell it load as much as you can and then exit this pop up. So our transport over here is going to come and he's going to pick up 10 stacks of metal. And you can see it going ahead and loading. And over on the right, you can see how many resources this transport is carrying. You can see it loading metal over here, and you can see it has a capacity of 30, and it's gonna stop when it's got 10 metal. It's got 10 metal, great. And I can tell it to go and say, unload it over here. You can unload it to a stockpile, or you can just drop it on the ground. It sort of makes a little temporary stockpile for you. Done and done. I don't remember if the drones are gonna try to clean this up for you afterwards, it might. So that's one thing you can do with the transport. And I think the drones are going to go and actually move this because they're like, it's not supposed to be there. It's supposed to be here. Poor little drones. You can also tell this transport to go and load from these mineral deposits. So if I say load resources and click here, my transport is going over there. Now I still have the transport selected. So if I were to right click, I would cancel that order and tell it to do something else like move. So I'm going to tell it to mine. Now I don't actually have to click the load resource. If you just right click on a resource, it'll always go and do a load command. So then I'm just going to click the ground to deselect the transport so that we can do other things. So it's gonna load that metal and then we could tell it to move it over here afterwards, which is kind of cool. Okay, so we have extra power. Our battery is slowly loading. We can click here and we can see it's got, it's charging, it's got stored power. And when we're on our resource overview of our base, if you mouse over here, you see the power surplus and you can see that we've stored power in our base. Good stuff, okay. We've cleared that out of the way. So I'm gonna go back to building. I'm gonna go to power. I'm gonna go to power cables. I'm just gonna stretch this power cable out a bunch to give us room to work with stuff. So I'm gonna go ahead and just right click a couple of times to get out of that. And my drones, once they're not busy mining all this stuff, will come over and build this power cable. So we're gonna need water. Now there's two ways to generate water on Mars. If we right click, we wanna go, this is a life support thing. Click on life support and we'll see a bunch of things that help keep our people alive. Farms, for example, um, water extractors extract water from underground deposits. Hey, we just got our first technology. And we scan an anomaly is what happened. We then 
got a bunch of science from that anomaly, and that was enough to finish magnetic filtering. Now, I still have things in my research queue over here. You can see we're starting on fuel compression, although we're nearly done because we had so much overflow. And because I finished magnetic filtering, it's showing me the next thing in the biotech queue. This is to upgrade vapor, uh, moisture vaporators, so that we get more water production. Oh, that sounds like it's going to be nice. Again, this order will be randomized, so you might get something completely different. What do I want to do? You know what? I'm going to start robotics here. We don't know what drone hubs are yet. You'll, well, you'll, you'll see what that is in a moment. We have access to drone hubs already because we brought some with us from Earth as a prefab. But I'm going to go and just queue that up. Again, you're going to want to sort of research a lot of the things. So, you know, more things, more better. Here, we'll do this and then, uh, yeah, water sounds like a pretty important thing. We'll go ahead and, and research that. The things on the left here, the first few texts you're going to get, very, very cheap. You know, a thousand science, a thousand science, that's pretty cheap. Later on, you're going to get things that cost 10,000 science, 20,000 science to research. Slows down a lot. Okay, so our bots are building this power cable. So let's go back to talking about life support. So again, I'm going to right click the life support category, food, water, either from water extractors, which come from these underground uh, depots like this. You also have the evaporators, which actually pull water from the atmosphere. Um, these, you know, take a fair amount of power and don't produce that much water. You can see it's five power to produce one water per hour. The water extractor also uses five power, but can produce up to five water per hour. Much, much better, but requires that you found a water deposit. Now we've got one over here. The grade's very low, which might actually slow down how much water we can produce. We've got another one over here. It's also very low, so that's fine. But you can see it's got like over 10,000 units of water under the ground here. Fuel compression is done. Cool. Excellent. Okay, let's go and build the water extractor. Now, if I click on that, you'll see the water extractor has another sort of like border around it, right? And that is, it has to have a deposit within that border. You can see it's red, red, red. As soon as, boop, now we're good. We've got water within our borders. I can put it right on top of the water. I can put it off to the side. If I put it off to the side, you can actually have more than one water extractor for this depot. So you can, you can stack multiple things on these underground bits if you want. I think we'll be okay with one to start off with, but I'm still just going to sort of hit the edge of it just in case I want to build a second one. I'm going to build closer to the power cable over here so we don't have to go as far to run the power. So I'm going to build it, say, here. That sounds good. Now, you'll notice that next to the building, there are four tiles there with that sort of yellow-blue pipe icon. That's where you're going to connect water pipes to the water extractor to route the water into your base. Now, we can rotate this building. The building itself is basically roundish, symmetrical. So the building itself doesn't really care how it's uh, pointing, except that, you know, it looks a little different depending on how you want it. But the um, the, the cable openings or the, the, the pipe openings do have a side. So I'm going to go ahead and put it like... I'm going to put it like this because I'm going to want to run the pipe on top of the cable just because it keeps everything neat and orderly. So I'm going to plop it down that way. So that's going to get built, but it does need a cable connection and it needs a pipe connection. So if we right click, you can see pipes over here. Pipes get built very much like cable. So if you click on pipes, um, what you're going to want to do with your pipe is whereas power cables just have to touch the side of the building anywhere, the water pipes have to touch the building in one of these tiles one of these yellow uh, pipey kind of tiles for it to work. So if I built the pipe here, that would not count as being connected to the water extractor. But if I build it here, we're good. And then other than that, it builds exactly like a power cable. And yeah, to keep the base organized, I like to run the pipes on top of the power cables like that. Because, you know, sure, makes sense to me, right? I'm going to do that. And yeah, you can sort of keep clicking and sort of chaining things along. Um, I'm going to do that. This is a mistake. I don't want this bit. So how do I get rid of it? If I click on this bit over here, there's a button over here that says salvage. And what it's going to do by blowing this up, by hitting this, it gets rid of that pipe. Um, you can do that to buildings that have been built already. So this concrete extractor, I can salvage it over here and get the material back. But I don't want to do that. But it's also a good way to cancel buildings under construction. Like if I change my mind about the water extractor, I could go ahead and just hit that button over there. So... Our little drones are bringing some resources over here. That's getting built. Oh, we're going to need power here too. So I'm going to right click. I'm going to go to power. I'm going to click power cables. And I'm going to go ahead and just do that. There we go. And yeah, you don't have to have them running together like this, but isn't it, isn't it just better? Let's go ahead to a fast speed here. We're going to try to finish um, building our oxygen generators and everything before the end of this video. So I'm going to right click. I'm going to go back to life support here. And I'm going to build a Moxie. Produces oxygen. 
takes two power and produces two oxygen per hour here. So a moxie can be placed anywhere. Doesn't need a resource. It just extracts it from the atmosphere. But it does need a, a connection to pipes. So why don't I put it like right here? It'll have power and a pipe connection. That sounds pretty good. Although remember, all all extractors produce dust, including this one over here. So you know what? I'm going to put the moxie on the other side so this doesn't get quite as dusty. So we're going to do that. Cable fault reported. Now, it's complaining that it doesn't have a pipe connection. What it doesn't have, it has a pipe connection, you can see, definitely. It's complaining it doesn't have anywhere that's taking this water. This water has nowhere to go. So to get rid of this warning, let's go and build a water tower. This is going to store water for us. Sounds like a good thing. We're going to go and place it. And again, I'm going to just get it to... That'll overlap or deposit a little. You know what? That's going to be fine. I'm going to place it here. So again, it'll have a connection to this pipe. And the oxygen producer, our moxie, is going to have the same complaint. Hey, I've got oxygen, but no one wants any. So what we're going to do is I'm going to right-click again. We've got an oxygen tank over here. So I'm going to click on that, and I'm going to put it here. Now, these tanks are really good because there's going to be lots of things over the course of the game that are going to cause your water requirements and oxygen requirements to fluctuate upwards or downwards, as well as your production might fluctuate upwards and downwards. When these buildings need maintenance, they stop working for a bit. Imagine your oxygen producer stops working for a bit and you don't have any oxygen um, storage. That's a bad thing. So it's good to have a little bit. I tend to start like this. I, I, you know, get one water tower, one oxygen tank. And every time I build a dome, I tend to build one extra water tower and oxygen tank right next to the dome. It doesn't actually matter where they are, although maybe, you know, an asteroid could hit a pipe and destroy it. Or a meteor, I should say, um, could, could hit a pipe and destroy it. And then... Um, uh, you know, your, your dome might be in trouble. So it just feels right to have the storages there. Anyway, by building the storages, the warnings have gone away. So now we're producing concrete. We've got oxygen and, and water. We've got power, although, oh, we've got a power shortage. It's nighttime, so we got a power shortage. But remember, our, our um, solar panel only generates five electricity. So even during the day, we're still going to have a power shortage. It's because we added a bunch of stuff that needs more juice. So let's go ahead and expand our power production here. What I'm going to do is... I don't know. Is, is there an ideal ratio? Maybe, probably something. Um, more power accumulators and solar panels would be good. More wind turbines that run all the time would be good. But hey, we've got these two Sterling generators. Now, we don't know how to build them from scratch. We don't have the technology, but we brought two prefabs with us from Earth. Now, our solar panels generate five power when they're running. Our wind turbines generate a little more than five power. The Sterling generators generate 10 power. Not only that, they'll produce double that amount if you open them up. And we've got two of them already ready for us to go. Okay, let, let's go ahead and build that. They're tiny too, which is great. So I'm going to go ahead. You know, we got lots of power generation over here. I'll just build you. And you know what? I'm going to drop the other one down as well. Boom. Tons of power. These sterling generators will just instantly sort of plop down as a prefab. You just got a, some assembly required. You got some like Allen wrenches and you end up with three extra screws at the end and you don't really know why but there you go so these are our sterling generators let me go down to normal speed notice our power surplus insane we got tons of juice now wonderful we can go a step further if i click on a sterling generator there's a button here for me to open it see it produces 10 power if i open it first of all it looks really cool and it's now producing 20 power you can actually, if you look at the tooltip, you can see you can use control here. If you control click on one, it does all generators. So now all the Sterling generators are closed. If I click again, all the Sterling generators will open up. Tons of power. During a, um, while it's closed, it's protected from dust. So if you're in a dusty area, so if you're too close to an extractor or if there's a dust Sector storm, you, you might want to keep it closed. And also, if it's closed, it would just need less maintenance. And you know what? We don't need this much power right now. And to maintain this, this would need polymers we have some polymers but not that many and we're not producing any so for now i'm going to go ahead and keep these closed but we're going to remember that we can open them up later on when we need some more power so now we've got tons of power we've got some water we've got some oxygen is it can, can, can we get people on the planet yeah we could start looking at that now to get people we need to build the dome basic dome over here now you can build the dome anywhere we could decide to build it here they're huge this is the smallest dome Domes get massive as we keep playing. This is the smallest one. It can still hold a lot of people in here. And yeah, we can put it anywhere we want. Now, there are certain things you might want to consider for the dome, though. Let's say, so we've been using metal from just these little surface metal deposits. These are going to run out at some point. 
we're really going to want to mine metal. And this is a mineral deposit, a metal deposit that we can mine over here. If we hit M, we can see there's some here, there's some over there. That's great. And hopefully as we keep scanning, we'll reveal more of them. Unlike concrete, which... So we can build a concrete extractor and it just runs on its own. As long as it's got power, it will extract concrete. The same thing for water, um, which is under life support. The water extractor runs on its own as long as it's got power. The extractors for metals and rare metals have to be worked by people. You can actually see it's got a worker requirement. Um, the metal extractor can have up to 12 workers. It's four workers per shift and there's up to three shifts in a, in a, a Martian day, right? There's the sort of morning, afternoon and night shift. Metal extractors only work if you've got people. So if I if I put it here, I'm getting warning. Okay, we're too far from, from domes, right? Um, so you won't actually be able to use this if I put it here because it needs, it needs workers. So let's build our first dome near this metal deposit. So I'm going to go, I'm going to right click. I'm going to go to domes. I'm going to get a basic dome over here. You can see it needs 80 concrete, 20 metal, and 10 polymers. Jeez, we only have 13 polymers. It's gonna use almost all of it. You can see it also consumes 15 electricity. Okay, we have just enough for that. One oxygen and one water. Okay, okay, we've got some to spare. That's gonna be all right. It also needs to be maintained by concrete from time to time. Take this basic dome and we're gonna put it, you see it's got that, that blue hex outline? That's the range at which people can work. So you want the mine to be somewhere within that outline and that's okay. Let's put it here near the, um, near the Rocky Mountain, right over here. That sounds good. You can see it's got some water connections as well. So we'll just plop it down over there. So it's gonna take a while to construct, needs a lot of material, but that's okay. Now, we're gonna go and put a cut in here. In the next episode, what we're gonna do is we're gonna finish the dome, we're gonna get some housing set up, we are gonna get our mining set up, and we'll have everything ready for us to send people. And that's when we're gonna send, we're gonna look at this resupply button, which allows us to send more shuttles from Earth, cargo rockets and passenger rockets. Thanks for watching, folks. I'll see you guys next time.